In this video we're going to take a quick look at some operations that are available on the geometry column of a geo data frame. Um, so we've got this notebook here, I'm just going to import the libraries at the top. Um, so we're importing geopandas, matplotlib and pathlib. Now this is um, a bit of preparation I've got here. Basically I've got a skeleton for what I want to do. Um, some, so what we've already covered is how to load geospatial data into a geodata frame data structure and we know the geopandas has this read file function for that purpose and we also know that whatever we pass to read file um, it can actually be a local file on the file system but it can also be a URL which will be online at some location for example a github repository or an S3 bucket or a, any other cloud resource or, or repository once you have that geo data frame, um, we also know that there is one active geometry column and that geometry column consists of uh, shapes, essentially, geometry vector data types, points, line strings and polygons, as well as their multi-line, multi multi-point, multi-polygon variants as well. So in this video to begin with, um, we're going to analyse some of the operations and attributes that are available to geometries. In this video we're going to look at setting the index of a geodata frame, we're going to look at introduction to coordinate reference systems and we're going to look at reprojecting between different coordinate reference systems which is a key operation in geospatial analytics and we're also going to look at measuring areas when we have projected our um, geodata frame. So first of all we have this USGeo uh, JSON file which is at this particular location and what we're going to do is we're going to use the function we already know about to read it into a geo data frame. So it's geopandas.readfile. We pass F to that and then we can read the head of that data frame. And what we get back, similar to that there, um, what we get back is a data frame containing each state in the United States of America. And the geometry column contains the shapes, the particular types for that particular state. For example, a multi-polygon for Alabama, a multi-polygon for Alaska, and of course polygons for Arizona and Arkansas. So let's get started with some other operations. We can reset the index. So what I want to do, and this is a standard pandas operation, we can reset the index of this geo data frame. So I'm going to say gdf equals gdf dot set index, and we can pass in the name of the column. In this case, the the actual state, the state's name is what we want to use as the index. So then, when I call the head function, I have a data frame which is indexed by the state name, which is what I want. And once I've got that, I can then do uh, use the pandas dot loc um, attribute to. It's, um, you can access this like a Python dictionary where you use the square brackets and you pass in the index. Um, in this case, I'll look for California and that gives me back the series in this case um, and the geometry field in that. You can get that with the second indexing parameter to get this quite cool representation of the state of California. And as we've seen before, we can stringify that to get the actual multi-polygon itself. So I want to now talk about coordinate reference systems. So this is quite a um, theoretical subject, I guess. Um, but a, co a coordinate reference system um, is a coordinate-based local, regional or global system that's used to locate geographical entities. A spatial reference system defines a specific map projection and also transformations between different spatial reference systems. So what is all this? It's basically how do we change data, spatial data that represents the Earth's three dimensional surface? How is that flattened in order to render it onto a two dimensional surface? So what you need to do is project the geometry from uh, 3D to 2D and vice versa. So that leads, you, leads us to two particular types of coordinate systems. We have geographic coordinate systems where um, these define the locations of features on a model of the Earth. Now, these are shaped like globes, they're spherical, and their units are angular units like degrees. So, geographic coordinate system, but we also have projected coordinate systems, which are flat. Um, so, these are 
These convert the above geographic coordinate systems to a flat two-dimensional surface and the units for these are usually metres. Now that's important for the rest of this tutorial. But what you can do is every geodata frame has a coordinate reference system that is attached to it that defines what coordinate reference system the geometry column is actually, ref you know, what what is it referring to essentially. And we can inspect the coordinate reference system of a geodata frame with the .crs attribute. So if I inspect from that geojson data that I've loaded in, I see that the name of this particular coordinate reference system is WG, WGS84 and it's a geographic 2D CRS okay and then impo importantly the units are degrees geodetic latitude and longitude so this is a standard latitude longitude uh, coordinate reference system so what I want to do now is that you know we can see that it's um, the world geodetic system WGS84 and that's a standard that's commonly used in cartography and satellite navigation including GPS we can actually inspect that coordinate reference system's axis info axis info and I can do that with the axis info attribute on the coordinate reference system and that gives us a bit more information about the particular axes that are defined so now the important takeaway from this is that calculating areas will not be particularly meaningful using the um, this particular reference system what we because the distances will be based on latitude and longitude pairs what we want is to get them into meters essentially but if we do attempt to take the area geopandas data frames have an area attribute and that will give you the area of the geometry column but we see that geopandas warns us when we try to access this um, it says that the geometry is a geographic CRS results from area are likely incorrect so we need to reproject this geopandas data frames geometry column we need to reproject that to um, a different coordinate reference system in this case the cylindrical equal area projection that's a good one for calculating fairly accurate surface areas on on the earth so I'm going to do that just now and I'm going to define one called GDF Mercator and it's going to be GDF GDF.2CRS and we'll define projection to be um, the cylindrical equal area. So this is a function on the GeoPandas data frame to CRS which will change the coordinate reference system to whatever you specify in the argument which is a dictionary. So if I now uh, look at this new GeoPandas data frame, we see that we get uh, a newly projected CRS, not a, uh, not a geographic one, we get a projected one, which has the access info where the units are meters, which is important for getting accurate areas. And we need meters, not degrees. So. Now that we've projected, we can um, we can basically let's let's try plotting these out to see the difference between the two. And I'm just going to copy some code um, to do this. So what I've done is in matplotlib I've specified uh, two figures, uh, sorry, two axes objects. Um, there's one row and there's two columns, and in fact there's a particular figure size here. And then I've plotted both the original geo data frame and the new geo data frame which has been projected and we can see that there is even the way it looks it has a, a few differences here um, the original one Alaska looking a lot taller than it is on the cylindrical one so we can kind of see the difference between the two they're different projections different reference systems for these geographical geospatial data so now we're going to do a few pandas operations I want to get the area of New York so I can look at the Mercator and I'm going to locate the New York index. Remember that we re-indexed by the state name and I'll get the geometry column. So that should give us, sorry, that should give us the row containing New York and we just call area on that. And then I can print that out. 
I see I get this very large number. This is actually the area in meters squared, roughly. Um, so I can print that out. Um, just to see what that is, we're going to use Panda, uh, Python's format strings to print it out in a better way. So a format string in Python, if you don't know, you just put an F in front of the string and you can embed variables within the curly brackets. So I could do that and it would print the same thing out. But what, what format strings have is a kind of unique syntax. You can define a, a language after the colon here and I can say put commas in. So I get a, it's a bit easier to see what that number is now. And I can also say give me to two decimal places. So yeah, the area of New York State in meters squared um, is equal to that. To get it in kilometers squared, I can uh, basically take what I've got here, New York area, and to get it in kilometers squared, we just um, divide by ten to the power six, and. We get 127,091 kilometers squared. And um, finally, I want to add, if I wanted to add a new column to the data frame that had the area in kilometers squared, I can basically use pandas' apply function to do this. So I'm going to say GDF Mercator, Mercator, sorry, state area. This will be the name of the new column, and it's going to be equal to GDF Mercator geometry. So we're looking at the geometry field and we're applying a function to it. So I'm going to apply a function which takes each value and it will look at the area of that and it will divide by 10 to the power 6. So if I then apply that and look at the data frames head, we see we've got a new column here with the state area. So just to reiterate, this is what this apply function does. It's taken, we're, we're setting a new column called state area where we take the geometry column of the original data frame and we apply a function that says for each value of the geometry, so for this, it will calculate the area and divide by 10 to the power 6 in order to get this value. And it does that for every row in the data frame. I hope that's clear. So I'm going to copy some code and, and explain it just to end this video. Let me go over this. So what I'm doing is using pandas to find the biggest, the smallest state, to find the standard deviation in the state areas and the average state area in America. Taking it one at a time here, to get the biggest state we index into the data frame, we use our new column state area and we find which row has the maximum. Okay, so which row of, which row's state area is equal to the maximum state area in the data frame? And we do the same for the minimum and for the standard deviation of the state areas we just call the dot standard function for the average we just call the mean function so i can then print that out so we see that the largest state in america is alaska with 1.5 million kilometers squared the smallest is the district of columbia and then we see the, the standard deviation i think that I'm not so sure that should be in kilometers squared but we see the standard deviation, 226,000. We see the average state area is 179,000. So there's quite a lot of, uh, quite a large standard deviation. A lot of the states are smaller because the mean is, is fairly small, but there are quite a lot of larger states like Alaska. So as a final task, I can maybe order the state area. So get the state area and then I can call, I think it's sort values. Uh, to get that and then that's in um, ascending order we want it to go from the largest to the uh, largest state by area to the smallest so we can reverse that with uh, that syntax I believe we see that Alaska has the largest as we've seen up here um, but we've also got Texas and California and Montana which are also very large states um, so yeah the sort values function. This is a pandas function that can be used to sort the data frame over a particular column. And I think that's it for this video. Um, there's a lot to cover in, in this uh, topic and the many more operations you can do on a geometry column. So if you like the video, please subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye.